So here's a classic example of a gravimetrical analysis question. You can see we've got some form of experiment, some results and a whole bunch of questions related to this experiment. Now we've been looking at precipitation reactions, so let's go through and have a look at what this experiment actually involves. I've already read through this and highlighted a few important areas, but this experiment will be using precipitation reactions between barium chloride and sulfuric acid to determine the amount of sulfate ions. I'm highlighting the key things here, which are our reactants. We will test a 2.5 gram sample of wastewater to determine the sulfate ion by gravimetrical analysis. Great, fantastic. And I've also highlighted down any numbers that have been given to me. We've got our experiment here, and then we've got some questions. Let's read the questions and then see what we need to get from our basic experiment. Write a full chemical and ionic equation for this reaction that's occurring. Okay, so a full chemical equation involves barium chloride. So I need to know what barium chloride is. I can see the fact that it's actually given, given me the um, formula here as well. But you should be able to find the, um, the formula for barium chloride. Barium is two positive, chloride is one negative, so therefore it's gonna be BaCl2. Plus, we're reacting with sulfuric acid, H2SO4, H2SO4. And we're going to form a, our compounds. So therefore, in a gravimetrical analysis, we're doing precipitation reactions. So therefore, we're going to have barium sulfate being produced, BaSO4, and we're going to form hydrogen chloride, so hydrochloric acid, HCl. Now, this is not balanced. I need to put a 2 here, and I think that's then imbalanced. This will be aqueous. This will be aqueous. This will be our solid, which is our precipitate, and this will be aqueous as well. So there's my full chemical equation. I then need to write an ionic equation. I haven't got room here, so I'm gonna put it up above here. So let's have a look at it. My ionic equation is for this precipitate. So I take my precipitate and I write it out here. This is my precipitate. And then what I need to do is show what ions come together to form this precipitate, which is SO4 to negative aqueous, and my barium, which is Ba2 positive aqueous. So therefore there's my ionic equation, which just shows the ions coming together to form my precipitate. Part B is about finding the number of moles of precipitate. So here I need to find my number of moles of my BaSO4 equals the mass of my precipitate divided by the molar mass of my precipitate. So therefore I need to look at my results here and I can see I've got a mass of filter paper and then a mass of the filter paper plus the precipitate. What that means is the difference between these two things, which will be 0 0.4 grams, equals the mass of my precipitate. So therefore over here, I'm gonna put in 0 0.4 grams divided by my molar mass of barium sulfide. So I come over here, and saying not barium sulfide, barium sulfate. I find barium, which is here somewhere, 137.3. I then add on my sulfur, which is plus 32.1, then I add on for oxygen, 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16, plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16. Therefore, my molar mass of my barium sulfide is 233.4, and therefore your 0.4 divided by my answer gives me my moles of my precipitate, which is 1.71 times 10 to the power of negative three moles of my barium sulfate. I then need to deduce my number of sulfate present in the precipitate because what I was analyzing was for my sulfate. So you say, if I've got this much barium sulfate, how much sulfate must I have? Now this is gonna be equal to the same number of moles of my barium sulfate because for every one barium sulfate, there is one sulfate present. So that is also equal to 1.71 times 10 to the power of negative three moles. And then I can work out what the next thing is. Determine the mass of sulfate present in the sample of water and express this as mass by mass, percentage mass by mass. So therefore, I'll then need to go right. My mass of my sulfate equals number of moles times molar mass. Now, my number of moles of sulfate is here, 1.71 times 10 to the power of negative three. My molar mass of sulfate is just my um, sulfur and my four oxygens, so we go 32.1 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16. That's not right. Well, I don't know. 32.1 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16. That looks better. And that is 96.1. And therefore, that will be equal to times 
separate one times 10 to the power of negative three is 0 0.164 grams of sulfate. That's how much sulfate is present in my wastewater. Because what I found out is I found out how much precipitate I had. I then worked back to work out how much sulfate I must have had and then found the mass of that. Now I need to go percentage mass by mass. This is found by going um, what I've got divided by the total times by 100. So therefore I'll take the mass of my sulfate that I was looking for, divide that by my mass of my wastewater, and I multiply that by 100%. So therefore it's going to be, running out of room here, 0 0.164 divided by my mass that I started off with. I started off with 0.205 grams. So therefore 0.205 grams and times that by 100. So I take this, divide that number by 0.205 equals 80, and just times that by 100, 80.2%. So therefore it's actually very highly concentrated in sulfate ions. Um, these numbers are just made up, so therefore that's probably why that happens. So anyway, going through this process, you can see that this is the process of gravimetrical analysis. You find your number of moles of precipitate, you trace that back to work out your sulfate, and then you go through the mass. So we're using number of moles equals mass over molar mass. We're using a knowledge of um, how much of that precipitate was my actual um, analyte that I was looking for, and then mass equals number of moles times molar mass. Each time showing your notation about what you're finding, 